No, but a swap followed by a light bulb. Here. Four man mosh pit followed by a tomb. Oh no! Oh, a huge light bomb coming in on the Genji, and that's a five man light bomb. They're gonna follow up and they're gonna get one, two, three kills. And it's gonna be everybody dying. Oh my god, when does this happen? Everybody's dead. I'm back. I've realized I've just changed to the wrong screen entirely. But. Why is it showing? Oh my gosh. This is this is not working out for me today, is it? You're just being a problem, aren't you, game? <laughs> Let me see if I have some scores. Oh, I just hit everything up as well. <sighs> yeah, yeah, there it is, there it is. I haven't even... This has all gone wrong immediately. <laughs> let me just... Let me just, like, cry in the corner for a little bit. <laughs> oh, I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to restart this. If anyone watches this... Like eventually, we're going to see this uh, this problem in action, All right? I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna chuck it on over, and you you can see in real time me doing things. <laughs> all right, let's just just chuck it over to this screen, and you can see what I, as I'm putting things in my little notepad here. Because we see anarchy had what have anarchy banged out? Banned out. They had banned out towers of doom. <laughs> As well as Tomb of the Spider Queen. <laughs> Meanwhile, Roll One Esports had banned out uh, Braxis Holdout <laughs> and <laughs> for Sky Foundry. <laughs> what map? First map? Dragon Shy is the first map. I knew that one. I had it open. Ah, <clears throat> oh, wonderful. Just what we wanted. And now I'm just like, I need a drink, so I'm just going to mute myself. Right. So, now that things are in control, we have Anarchy facing Roll 1 Esports in Division C West. This is the division I play in. I've already played one of these teams, Roll 1 Esports. I have not played Anarchy. I don't know when that's happening. I can't recall my schedule. However, this is going to be good scouting. I love a good bit of scouting cast. So I'm going to be like, hmm, yes, what do they do about <laughs> Of course, I don't know what bands are. I don't know what who first picked. I don't know who first, I don't know who Matt picked. Because I don't like spoiling the results for myself. And I want to see how it goes in action. Right. Without further ado, I am going to... Did I actually claim the cast? Did I actually do this correctly? Okay, when the website catches up with my voice. Uh, my casts. I'm just making sure everything's been done correctly. Sorry, this is not professional for me at all, man. This is... I did great for the last one. This one has been a mess. Anyway, it looks like everything is good, and I am going to put us into the game, and we are going to go to the races. As... The heroes prepare from combat. We see on the... You guys had it meant to have it the other... <sighs> this is why I check replays first. Swap team sides! So, now that things are swapped around, we have Roll1 Esports with Mongoose on the Leoric. Poe on... On the Chromie. Velvet on Lunara. Rock your W on the... An Ubrak and roll. One. I don't even know. I said it. Joaniba? Joaniba? Decked. <laughs> we have Decked. And on the right hand side, we have a Joker on. Joanna. Hunter Lust on Blaze. Grizzly64 on V. Oh. On a. Oh my god, I can't remember her name. I'm looking blankly at her. Oh, I'm going to get crucified for getting this one. Oh my god. What is her name? Kira. Steak and Jake on the... I got so stuck on it. Greymane. And Yokoski on the Anduin. 
currently just doing a little bit of hits, a little bit of stacking. I think she's stacking. Let's find out. As we have Sandblast quest from Chromie, we have, oh my gosh, we have Scroll of Identity from Deckard. And we have Anubrak going that region globe quest that wants from Generation Master. And we have no quests on the side of Anarchy, so I'm just going to close that. That's boring. <laughs> um, no. This should be a good match by the looks of it. Both teams have a lot of um ways to kill the other. We do have a probably stronger... I say stronger CC chain from the side of um, Anarchy. However, with Dahaka and Deckard, there's still a lot of CC that can be dished out by the side of um, a lot of area control that comes in with the side of Roll 1 Esports, as Poe is just finding the Joker and peppering them down, slowly stacking. This just makes me want to play Chromie. Chromie is one of my favorite damage dealers to play. Not great at it, but I'm passable. Which is good enough for me. Good stun coming out from Nubrak, meaning they aren't able to step on. Join Eber will get the finish. Probably not for one. Deckard probably isn't quite the character you want to finish your camps. He's not known for his clear. He's not known for having good auto attacks. In fact, I think he has some of the weakest auto attacks in the game. That's not him. I pushed the wrong button. There we go. Yeah, seventy three point seven, not great. Anyway, zooming back out, Rocky Wood is going to hit by the Grizzly stun. Is going to be an awkward spot. Doesn't quite run the way expected. However, that'll be Grey Man finishing him off, taking him down. As Poe ran out of mana, and just the potions weren't able to quite find the targets they needed. Yeah, I think with how everything is, I think that looking at the comps. The mid lane should really be controlled a bit easier by the side of Anarchy. But when it comes down to fights, when we're getting into like 7s to 13s, it very much, I think, swings in the favor of Roll 1 Esports, especially if Lunara is kind of going that first build, which doesn't look like it. It looks like she may just go spreading Toxin. But a bit hard to tell from here. Chromie already has her level 5 talent up. Good take by the blue team at bottom, because I can see Grizzly moved up to take it. So it's very important that they got that Ven. It's Rocky Wars going to slow down rotation. I'm going to look up here. I feel like this is in favor of the Goose. I feel like that if Leoric hits his hand, Hunter Lust is in a bit more of a dangerous spot. Is Rocky World ever going to get it in time? No, Hunter Lust does actually get the fires off as the blue team is being... Of blue team, Roll 1 Esports is pushed out of bottom. Mongoose, you're on the board. How did you end up on this side? You should know better. You should know which team's home team, which team's away team. I'm just going to complain about Mongoose's match. No. Um, good charge by Hunter Lust, meaning they are able to get out of immediate danger. However, with Leoric and Anubrak, you don't quite have the kill pressure there. Like, yeah, sure, you can kill, but you don't quite have that um, kill, like, immediate kill pressure there. Mongoose is backing out. He's going to have to if he wants to kind of step up to that top objective, because that's where Blaze is. We do see the free man of the two da damage and um, Deckard just holding the fort bottom, holding that objective. I really, I really think it should be Velvet like rotating through here. Like, yeah, sure, they're more susceptible to this damage, but they can clear just that bit faster. We do now have a good old brawl coming out on top as we have Mongoose hitting the lumps. Hunter, Hunter Lust and Hunter Lust is backing out. I was about to get fully into that, and it just my dreams are shattered. Objective is up for the blue team. Joanna is now stepping on it. Chromie does hit a few bits of sand. We see Velvet and Ju Juaneba. Juaneba? 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 Juaneba. Dick it. Taking get campus counter. Leoric does have a bit better clear, especially because they're going to get to the camp first. It unfortunately, does kind of mess with them because a lot of their clear is their um, Q, their spell power. In fact, it's an anti spell power shielding there. As you see, Chromie is now that slowing sand. That's an excellent four-man route from Deckard, and that is actually a Kara barely holding on. Does get the tether out, so they aren't able, so they are able to survive. That movement, man. Oh, Greyman has been caught out. Doesn't quite get hit by any follow-up CC is the issue. I don't think Rocky or W had any. Yeah, we can see Q was just thrown out. Then is like, screw you, man. Get out of my territory, my turf. And yeah. Yeah, I can feel my energy is back now. Is the title still ro
I thought I updated it. Thank you for saying that, my Hector. <laughs> that should hopefully be better. If maybe wrong way around. As we see, Poe does hit the sands and trap and sands. I think it must be slowing. Oh no. Let's have a look. No, it's adrenal anomalies from the chromey adrenal anomalies. Adhoral. That makes far more sense than what I was saying. Uh, but yeah, Stack and Jack is actually getting relatively low, but not quite pressure there. Uh, Poe is out of mana. <laughs> not really much use I can do. We do actually see Heroics have come through the side of Roll 1 Esports as they actually get the web wrap onto Joe. Joe using Unstop immediately to back out. Their Iron Skin coming out. It did not! <laughs> it did not get rid of a box at all. It just brought out something else entirely. <laughs> So that box is staying. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, it is very team is taking bottom objective. Blue team kind of pushed out as Herox and now through for both sides. On the side of Roll One Esports, we see Cocoon has come out for Anubarak. We see da -da -da -da. stay a while and listen for Decked Thornwood Vines from the well Rocky World Rocky W is just kind of walking past. It doesn't want to deal with it. It's like mm, you know what. Not my problem. That talent, you can have it, bud. Don't want to deal with it. Don't kill me, please. Uh, anyway, we also see in Tomb from Leoric, which can get a decent amount, a lot of value out. And Tomb's probably one of the best ops of the game, despite some people disagreeing. Oh, it does no damage. It doesn't grow up. It doesn't need to do damage. It holds the person in place. And we see... Oh, I thought... Objective... I muted myself time. Oh, there is an Entomb. Hunter Lust is getting relatively low. However, damage isn't quite there to follow up with Mongoose. Mongoose saving back out. However, bottom and win will go down. There's a nice stay while and listen coming out from Deckard as that will be Joker taking out damage as well. And Kira will go down. However, we do hear um, Go for the Throat come out as Stack and Jake. Yes, I did hold control. Look, control, shift, O. Oh. It brings up a bunch of other stuff. Yes, I know. O. Oh. I said O. Oh. I didn't say zero, I said oh. It brought up a bunch of other stuff that apparently isn't what you said it was. So, yeah, I'm just going to accept it as it is. Anyway, to go back onto it, we also have heard Go for Throat come out for Greymane. Did manage to find a kill with it, but wasn't able to take anyone down. We do see unrelenting strikes from Kira. So, that will be a fun one to watch out for. Interruptible. However, Silence at 20 should be very good to kind of hold back Rock your W. Bunker from Blaze. It's Bunker. That's that's good. It's good. Hmm. Oh, for me, it picked up for me. It like brought up a bunch of like uh stats for my computer. So probably we'll have to look into that at a different time. Uh, I'll finally finish saying heroics three levels later, <laughs> as we see uh Blessed Shield coming in for Joa. <laughs> as 13 of others is now over to the side of Roll One Esports. As we're still actually doing this dance of no one's got an objective yet. I thought someone got it before, but I was apparently very wrong. We do now see this web wrap comes out. We'd like to see Mongoose drop in Tomb, and that is in Tomb onto Yuko Sky as they'll go down. Joker now in an awkward position as well. I imagine Iron Skin will be popped very soon, as yep, there it is. And now we do have the side of Roll 1 Esports watching that objective while the of a free man is broken down. Actually, the more I look at it, the more I like. But more I do like Anubarak rotating mid because he can rotate so quickly thanks to Burrow Charge. We do see Mongoose is now stepping up to Hunter Lust. There's a little bit of... Yeah. Yeah. Poor Steak and Jake. Also, it is still burst build. Choking Pollen. And we do see Mongoose versus Hunter Lust. Hunter Lust did drop the bunker to give it a little bit extra damage out. Does manage to drop the bucket with... Uh, dodge the bucket by getting into bucket, getting back out of bunker. I do like that, actually, to even cleanse the um, W from Leoric. It does so much. And we do see a new Brack is getting to objective. Will he get it in time? He started a channel. Will Blaze interrupt? Blaze does interrupt. And that will mean the objective once again. Oh, no. I definitely have the, I definitely have this selected. I don't know, man. I don't know. Hard to tell. I'd have to look into it. Anyway. Objective is... Not objective, but camp is being taken. Lyric is pushing up top. Light bomb comes out with Eurosky. Eurosky doesn't actually manage to find anyone with it. Rocky W backing out very low. Iron skin popped. Grizzly 64 takes the least amount of damage. However, with how everything was positioned, it just Poe couldn't quite find that damage. I mean, I'm radiant if that matters. 
I don't know if it does or not, but I am. And we do see now, bottom objective is being taken by the side of Roll One Esports once again. And are we going to get, maybe get at least a objective this game? Who knows? As Grizzly steps on, Rock Your W does skip the charge out, doesn't quite hit anything, does manage to follow up on Stake and Jake. Stake and Jake does use the swipe to get himself out of slowing sands. So that's not something you ever want to be stuck in for too long. Especially if people go unraveling, which I'm not quite sure about the Scromy. Um, interesting talent picked up. But, sorry, I like looking at Chromie talents because I'm like, I like Chromie. Interesting 16 pulled up. You don't usually see fast forward. Is it fast forward? Yeah, you don't usually see fast forward picked up. You, but it's if Chromie's playing at max range, it works out pretty well. It's a lot of consistent damage. However, is that really what you need for the check objective? Oh, Blaze gets there. Rocky W tries, doesn't actually get the interrupt, and that will be the first Dragonite of the game going over to the side of Anarchy. As Greyman, however, will go down bottom to the Freeman. This Freeman's turning out to be quite potent. Like, a lot of people are having difficulty putting, pushing through to it. Right. We do have Leoric coming down now. Keep in mind, this is only a 4v5 now. I imagine Mongoose is wanting to drop the Entomb. Does get hit by the stun. No ghost to kind of cleanse it. Decked getting excellent. Two man does stop the unrelenting swipe here before as it started up but couldn't finish it off. Mongoose doesn't quite hit the bucket. The bucket is missing. The goose has been contained. It's no longer loose. He's backing out. He doesn't like it. As the Dragonite is pushing on to that bottom fort now as mid fort was taken. And good. Oh, excellent. Unstop. Ghost form does work. Wait, what build does he work? Ah, uh, we have auto attack Leroy, got it. Oh. Though slowing stance may be a bit, that time stop may be a bit counterproductive for what Poe was trying to do. Still got damage out of him, sure, but nothing followed up. Joe just tapped. Oh no. I thought I heard Blessed Shield. I was sitting here like, what the hell was that? No, it was just Joanna's Q. <laughs> I was actually like, wait, what? <laughs> I thought... Something wild happened there, but no, it's not quite that. Grizzly taking a decent amount of damage, Velvet just peppering them down. That I imagine the burst is going to come through any second now. No, it doesn't come through because Grizzly does manage to find the swing, but however, will go down to the Chromie as Chromie manages to get there. Deep breath, Dragon Breath firmly on top of the head of Kira. And now we're back to camping. After. 10, 11 minutes of objective, we have just a nice simple camping. I'm going to pull up talents. As 16s are through for both teams, we do actually see Roman Esports is in the lead in terms of kills, but in terms of structures and such, Anarchy is in the lead. So it could go either way still. In saying that, the blue team is now pushing into that bottom fort, wanting to do their best to get rid of it, but no, Joanna is a scary force and decides to go back up, man, as Joker just kind of pushes them away. Let's just have a look everywhere. Any further talents that can stand out to me? No. Oh. Lingering ailment, though, does stand out. Usually you see, um... The multi-sun booming kick. So, with the armor reduction, we're looking at definitely more blow-up, but less CC. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Oh, it's by grappling as well. I am learning new things. Anyway. Closing that, as we have next objective coming up. As we see, blue team is actually doing pretty... Blue team took both the sieges while they managed to let the team of Anarchy just take that bottom cap. Interesting choice, but it is a choice. Joker pushing in, does manage to catch Velvet with the edge of their stun. Grey main is taken out of a fight early by Rock Your W. That is an excellent route coming out, and that looks like it was Scroll of Stone Curse. No, it's Sunstick, never mind. I see Joanna going down first. Top fort was taken by Mongoose throughout this time. Important thing to note. And that will be Greymane soon to follow. That is a disaster for <laughs> for Anarchy. That is not what you want to see. As Hunter Lust is going to push up, looking to see if they can take the top. No, Grizzly is looking to see if they can take the top objective. Mongoose does get the little bit of that. Nope, not going to do. As you do see, Grizzly is now top and means that DK will close. However, all the while, the blue team's been pushing. 
We do see Rowan Esports has taken fort. They're taking gate. They managed to time stop the Blaze. Blaze decided, hmm, don't want to deal with that. Now I've been time stopped and backs out. But however, respawns are going to be coming through in just the next few seconds. Stun comes out onto Roll. Roll does get stunned. Push out of the Anduin Light Bomb, however. Root doesn't quite find its mark from Dickard. However, we do still see a dollar damage coming out. And now the side of Rowan Esports has decided, maybe, hey, let's don't be here anymore. Let's just scoot on out of here. And they will back on out indeed. Rock your W is just getting that siege slowly chipped through. Are they going to try to st stop the Blaze? Blaze does get the oil slick and fire down. As we do see rewind used by Rock your W as 20s that came for a while ago. I missed that completely. Hunter Lust dropping an excellent bunker. Mongo's not try able to catch up with him. That means Rock your W does. That means Hunter Lust is actually able to live. Really. Good bunker by them. I don't know what else to say. Uh, we see Steak and Jake taking that, that camp. If we see... Uh, nah, the, I was going to say, I like to see Roll1 get aggressive on that, but I just forget how quick he takes those. It's very hard to <laughs> dislodge a Greyman off. It's not hard to dislodge a Greyman off there. It's just hard to get to him before everything goes down. Imagine we're going to see a Entomb. Excellent silence to tomb onto Anduin. Anduin's feeling a bit targeted right now as that will be Anduin going down as the Orc finishes his quest with that W being hit. Blaze in the meantime, because he was taking that fight a bit early, did decide to go up to the objective and just stop them from taking it that little bit earlier. Chromie getting out the damage, she can, just trying her best, doing her time, doing her thing. And now we see. Leoric is taking top. There is a siege camp pushing bottom, which Chromie is going to go deal with. Oh, we have Blaze in the same spot. <laughs> Stalling Velvet the same way. Being stopped, trying to be stopped by Rock. D your W the same way again. I'm noticing a pattern. Oh, Bunker's basically in the same spot. Bunker, Bunker was just dropped here last time. Oh no, guys, please move off my mouse. And there we see objective being taken by the... <sighs> no. And there we see objective being taken by the side of... Roll one esports. Only the second objective of the game in 18 minutes. So averaging one objective per per nine minutes. Nice, nice, nice. As we do have now the team pushing in the bottom. Both teams have 20s. I haven't actually pulled up stats since Storm Talents came through. As you see, rewind from a new rank. Bottomless flasks from Decad. I do not know what this talent is called. Forest's ref from Lunara. Piercing Sam's Akromi and that ever scary buried alive from Leoric. Oh, speaking of which, there it is. We do see a lot of damage coming out. The suns actually mean that Eurosky can live. We do see him looking for a light bomb, I assume. Yep, there it is. Joanna. Joanna only manages to find Rock or W. We do see a sleep only coming out to Joe. That's an excellent four man start, and that will be Anwar going down first. Then followed by Greymane. It was taken out by Chromie and the Dragon Knight. Hunter Lust drops the bunker try live. Joker will be next to follow. Hunter Lust goes in. Grizzly is now in an awkward position. Does get taken out. Hunter Lust is the last one left. The Dragonite booting them may not have been the best idea. GG is called by Rock Your W as yep, that looks like it is the side of Roll 1 Esports will be taking map one. As Court is falling. It's just the solo blaze. He gets one last stun onto Rock Your W. It's like a hey man, screw you. And that will be the game done. Good stuff. Right, game one goes over the side of Roll 1 Esports, so I'm going to throw it over to the wrong screen, as I always do, because I am bad at this. Push this button. One day I'll get remember to get rid of chat. I haven't. Uh, close game. <laughs> it, it actually felt much closer than it was, considering... It actually felt... Sorry, let me rephrase. It felt much closer than it looks on this screen. The kills... Sure, is probably the deciding factor, but a lot of it did come at the end. But for the like first twelve minutes, it was pretty even. Like, sure, the side of anarchy losing was like losing one, just kind of every now and again. But in terms of that objective and the buildings, it was so even up until that final dragon knight. There's only two dragon knights this game, but like, it was so even up until then that like. Up until 13, 14, there wasn't a major kind of wipe on either side. And that's, unfortunately, for Anarchy, Roll1 was the first ones to kind of get that 
big major fight win, and they're able to roll in off that. And you can see, actually, that kind of was notice in the stack in the stats. Lunara did a lot of damage. Chromie did a lot of damage. They had a lot of like long range damage. Meanwhile, Greyman and Kira kind of. With how the comps are really set up, Garyman and Kira had to get close, and between Lunar and Chromie, they are fine poking at you while you're in Narnia. They don't care where you are, they're like, oh, you're on the same screen as me, close enough, throw some sand, throw some trees, poison, wood, I don't know, vines, that's better. And yeah, we can see just kind of that poke ultimately was kind of the downfall of Anarchy that game. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to show quickly talents while we're here, because I, as I noticed, burst build from Lunara. That's just becoming more and more common. Full E build. <laughs> That's a new one. We do actually see Regeneration Master was finished. Not often, but you do see that. Joanna with that shield build. Auto tech build from Kira. Love it. Grey main did go the um, Wizard Duelist. But as I said before, kind of with a range of Lunara and Chromie, maybe... um. The I can't remember what the talent's called. The auto attack bonus range on uh, human form may have been a slightly better, also high rock. And I should say high. I don't know if I ever actually did say hi to both of you. Anyway, unfortunate timing. So I'm about to go on a little break while I swap maps over. As roll one did take that first one, so I'll be putting it on this screen, putting on some music. I'll be back in a few moments. not gone for long. I was getting some quick water. I was getting the next map open. As we see, we have Infernal Shrines, which has just loaded now, so let me swap on over into the game before I swap to the wrong screen, though, because I was about to do it. I'm like, oh, cool. I nearly went to stats. That's good. Summary. Uh, interesting choice of words there. Interesting. <laughs> I can see t interesting, just interesting words being t chosen a lot here. Also, hi, Raka. I will say it again. Just so you know, I am noticing you're here and not running away on purpose. Anyway, on the left side, we have Roll1 Esports with Rock Your W on the ETC. Mongoose on Blaze. Zad on the Tacita. Poe on the um... Fire to my people. Who is this man? Kaelfus and... One Eba on V and win. And on the right hand side we have Grizzly64 on V Junk Crap. We have the Joker on We have Mongoose getting tossed around. Joker is on the very stunned. Joanna Hunterlust is actually not on tank this time. They're on the Malfail. Brightwing does use phase shift. Eurosky once again on them. And Steak and Jake back on that. Grey main that G money. And now we're just back into rotating. Nice little bit of chaos at the beginning. Threw me off a little bit. But things are fine. This is not a good matchup for Blaze. This is very unfortunate for Blaze. Blaze just kind of has to save Sock into that, I guess. And we do see On a Pale Horse. Is that On a Pale Horse? Yes, we do see On a Pale Horse from Hunter Lost, which means they are able to get that Soak relatively easily. When we played um, Roll 1 Esports, Zad had played the offlane, so it's very interesting to see a swap because um, we had Z there was Zad on offlane and um, Mongoose was on damage, and this time we see Zad on damage and Mongoose on offlane. So interesting to see kind of that this team is much is actually quite flexible. Now I'm looking at this, I'm going, oh god, what did we dodge? As we see, camps are being traded out, kind of kind of expected on this map. Not really anything kind of too surprising there in all honesty. As you do see, the team is pushing into that for Nope, they're just getting soaked. Honestly, beginning of the game, just get soaked. I'm going to talk about comps for a little bit. Uh, both comps take out objective pretty fucking quick. <laughs> the only thing that I kind of am concerned about for roll one 
is it is double mage, which I know can seem problematic for a lot of people. So, like, yes, they have a lot of burst, but double mage is very, um, if you don't have that burst, you're going to have longer times between your major damage windows, but I'm not going to mention that stack. I'm not going to talk about that stack, Jake. But with the, um, the Grey Man on the other side, sure, they don't have as big burst, but they do have that consistent window to where the ver burst may actually matter. They actually have a bit more too consistent, like, yeah, sure, this is a mage with his bombs and stuff. But this is like two consistent damage dealers, technically. So while, yeah, sure, it's um... It's really gonna be a battle of who clears faster, I think. I think in this map, I may favor the Tassadar uh, and uh, Kael'thas, because they do much better on objectives. Kael'thas goes, fire. Fire! As he just puts a living bomb on a uh, minion, and then that blowing up with other minions and potentially the enemy team. And meanwhile, Tasta also has good clear. Great main sure, it does still have very good clear, don't get me wrong. He is known for clearing camps pretty well, but against a lot of small things such as this, he is still alright. He does have Qs in both Worgen and Human form. But the major clear for them will be Hunter Lust and Grizzly64, who will just can't try. Who will see probably just, yep, tries to get that poke in. Let's go have a check of things. So I haven't actually had a look. In terms of quests, we have Kael'thas has gone the Mana Shield Talon at 1. Blaze has gone Auto Attack Build. I just want to point that out because that is the old flame build. We do see Junkrat has actually gone Taste for Explosion. Yep. Thanks for explosions and piercing light from Anduin. Both gonna major quest. Is the level seven actually come through? Yeah, this is the talent I was talking about. Quick silver bullets. An extra range of range of 1.1 means that Greymain won't get poked out quite as easily. He can actually have an extra range to do damage, making him far more consistent. Like, yeah, sure, Wise and Duelist is fun. I like Wise and Duelist. It's a good talent in terms of damage, but in terms of consistency, this extra range from Quicksilver Bullets does a lot. Blaze has been stuck up here for a while. <laughs> Not too much lost, at least, from the buildings. Hunter lost using that move speed, <laughs> extra 150 move speed, just kind of avoid everything and still rotate reasonably quickly. As you see damage coming out, we do see excellent double stun. Tassadar wall keeping the enemy team back line. Rocky W does go through it. Is he... Yes, he is crowd surf as we actually see Tessar go down first. Second Jake is also getting relatively low. Rocky W doing their best. And this is what I mean by the lack of consistent damage, because because the consistent damage was the reason Tessar died. Stank and Jake, however, will find an untimely demise. Thank you to that well placed flame strike. Can he be like fewer frog? Raka, I'm sorry, but I have no clue what that reference is. <laughs> I have no clue what that reference is, and I know that's going to make you go, what the hell, man? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not that old. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to close this before I dig myself a deeper hole and actually have an open this. And I'm just going to turn off the stream. No, I was going to open t uh, stats while we're here, just have a look. We see pretty even healing between both healers. Brightwing is doing a bit more, but that's because she has phase shift and Anduin doesn't. <laughs> Face shift doing a lot of healing, especially onto people such as the Joker and the Malfael, and I'm just going to quickly stand up and readjust my uh, blanket that I've wrapped myself in, because it's not the warmest day here today, and I don't want to turn on the heater, because heating's expensive. Um, as I'm going back down here to this, as the blue team of Roll 1 Esports does manage to take the objective before the red team is able to step on, as Rock Your W was able to kind of get that knockback. Joanna caught out, does get hit by a stun. Face shift doesn't quite come off in time. It was still about a second off by the looks of things. And outside of having Speedy Dragon, that was never going to quite come down. As we see, teams coming in at roughly the same time for both teams. Both teams doing well to kind of keep the experience soak up and keep it competitive. So I'm going to swap over to this. As you see, Rock Your W has gone the Mosh. Well, I don't know why I'm saying that. We have Light Bomb from Anduin. Black Hole from Tassadar. I like it into the... Um, Da, 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 general divey nature of some of the heroes on the side of um, Anarchy. We have Bunker from Blaze, which all important, and Pyroblast from Kael'thas. Ooh, Pyroblast. Then we have 
shield from Joanna, which is probably a bit better if you're wanting to blow up the front line of the tanks, the two tanks. Uh, Reptire from <clears throat> Reptire from Junkrat. Da, 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 da. Go for front from Greymane. Last right from Melf, which Bunker will actually be very good at cancelling that one out because you need to open the bunker before that one goes off where you die. And Brightwing went for that blink heal. I'm going to close this and just have a watch because both teams are kind of posturing here. Because I'm going to push the wrong button. As you see, slide coming in, light bulb coming out, Mosh coming out. There's a double stun. Bunker comes out, and that will be Joe coming down first as both the front line of. The blue team getting that bunker. Last rights was used, but must have been cancelled out. I didn't see it come out, but it must have been about someone. I don't know. I must have missed it. I'm not going to bother going back, but it didn't even come out. Yeah, I don't know, Rammenstein. I'm going to be honest. I'm not that odd. <laughs> You're going to assault me. I'm going to assault you back. Uh, and we do see Arcane Punisher being taken by the side of... Roll one eSports, so second Punisher in a row where they're able to get it. As I said kind of earlier in the game, they do have better clear on the objective than Roll one eSports. Sure, more burst, and oh, actually, what did Zad go? Actually, with that W build from Tassadar, that does make it a bit more consistent in terms of damage. However, it's still not, I'm going to auto-attack you like 20 times, and you're going to die. Uh, Grey main levels of consistent damage. It is... Zonal consistent as opposed to auto consistent. I'm going to make up terminology and hope someone one day believes me. <laughs> as you do see, the red team is coming up onto the bruiser camp. We see blue team is taking the siege camp of anarchies once again. As Kalfus is just going to quickly just vomit out those ones. Like, bleh, bleh, and the camp will go down. Oh, Junkrat has decided to check it with a mine. No one home. That's fine. No one has to be home. Junkrat, you've done it. You, you checked. Anyway, Blaze is alone. If they realize, they should just go on the goose, make it no longer loose, and just put it back in its core cage. Anyway, um, Siege Camp now taken by the blue side. Stake and Jake does get slid. We see Tesla will come out. We see follow-up stun from Poe. And if that wasn't enough, if he hadn't died by then, I also saw the follow-up from Anduin. So that person was dying. There was not much of a choice. Who is missing me? Oh. And that's when we see this next building going down. We see Blaze is once again going to struggle to get rid of this. Last price back up from Malfoul, but Mongoose does have Bunker, so this is kind of like a null game. A null game of ultimates up top, because if one drops one, then the other drops the other. And essentially, if you're Blaze, you need to wait for one to be dropped his one to be dropped before you drop your one. If you're mouth out, you have to wait for his one to be dropped before you do yours. It is really just clear and pray that the other one doesn't kill the other. Uh, anyway. <laughs> we do see now the blue team is pushing up onto that middle fort is... Yeah! The pace of the game is really much being controlled by Roll1 Esports this game as well. As Anarchy's trying to step into it. Poe does get the stun off. Hunter Lust not quite getting there in time. It doesn't have quite the um, lockdown to kind of help anyway. And that's probably the thing that I haven't mentioned this game. In terms of CC, really what you have, Polymorph, Junkrat, Trap, and Joanna's kit. That's about it. But from the side of but on the side of Roman Esports, we have Piercing Light Anduin. We have Rock Your W's Charge. We have Mongoose's Charge. We have Brightwing nearly going down to the splash of Pyroblast. We see Black Hole coming out. Actually, Riptide gets a good damage on the three members of the enemy team. Oh, team of Roll 1 Esports. Hunter Lust going down. Eurosky getting relatively low. Blaze doesn't quite find it. Lightbomb coming out onto the Joker. Joker taking a lot of damage. Does get rooted. We do see Iron Skin coming out. However, that is still danger. And actually, he lit. Did he bring Lightbomb into. No, it was the um, Flame Strike that found the kill onto the Brightwing. And that is disastrous timing, actually, for Anarchy, as the side of Roman Esports can just start the objective relatively free, as one Eber gets um, everyone back up just slowly. And now we have middle, but this top fort being pushed. Mm, yes, buildings. Take them. Yes. Stroke my beard as of yes. Mm, yes. Excellent. Go on. Do it. Nice. And now we are... Uh, 
have it fought. Blue team is relatively in control of the map still. It's still it's much more this one feels a bit more um in the favor of roll one than the last map did. I I may be saying that because it took years for the first objective to be capped on Dragonshire, but this one is going by it just that bit quicker. As we see Dragon not Dragon Shire. As we I said Dragon Shire, now I've missed myself entirely. As we see the Immortal Punisher being taken by the side of Roman Esports this time being Immortal One being quite damaging, actually. And interesting that we have a red team kind of are they halving? Yes, they are. Oh well, everyone except Greyman, which I think Greyman should have probably been one of the major ones to come back as the as he probably clears the fastest, and Grizzly actually probably clears way as fast as not. Greyman XT has come back now. Brightwing staying out to get the Soak. I imagine we're going to see Phase Shift coming very soon. As we do see Slide coming out, hitting the Joker. The Joker's taking damage. Hunter's Lust is taking damage. We do see Blink coming out. Joker went to sub 200, almost sub 100, but doesn't quite find... Doesn't quite go down, but Phase Shift has only just now come out. Which, interesting that we decide to use it now. Considering that they could Grizzly will fail, man. You nearly died there. Like, dude. Stay alive. Stay alive, my Australian brethren. And you will fight again. Anyway. Sorry about that. Just had a moment. Um, mid fort being taken. Yeah, it does very, very much like um, one of the map is going into ro roll one. However, if we look at talents. This feels like it's for, we're hitting kind of a point where it can turn more in the favor of Anarchy. Because, well, I feel like I'm really zoomed in now. I am. Because, well, Greymane has now his attack speed bonus where he's going to be going very quick. And we do have minus armor from Brightwing, which allows people to be bursted down by just a bit quicker. And Endless Mines from Junkrat, which is probably one of my... um preferred talents. I do love that talent. And it just makes him very consistent and getting that extra burst out with extra wound timers just that bit more often means he does so much more. This is camp just about up. No, it's another minute. It looks like we've got a call for bottom forward. How quick is the red team going to react? Are they just going to get rid of the mid camp and push or are they going to back fully? We can see Grizzly is back, and we can see Eurosky is backing. Hunter Lust and the Joker, however, electing just to run downwards, which is not quite as fun. Sad. <laughs> we see a. W oh my god, guys! <laughs> just help yourselves quit. Help yourselves clear that bit faster. As we do actually see this side of Roman Esports is actually backing out. They got the gate. That is a good start. I would like to maybe see the gate of mid, because next objective is mid. However, it's a frozen, so. It will stop the gate anyway from doing too much. Twenties mm. are nearly through for the side of um Roll One Esports, as we're actually pretty close to the next fight. There actually is Shield coming out, one Eva going down in an awkward spot, and they'll be Grey taking him out. Roll Rock your W gets a decent stun out. Tyre is moshed! Which means Tyre will not be able to go off until Tyre but Rip goes off. Grey Mate does use go for throw. I did hear it come out then. Stun doesn't quite find anyone. Actually, the blue team should be backing out. I said, yeah, sure, it's a one-for-one one trade. However, you're missing your healer. That's a lot of resources that you're missing with that. And saying that, no, ETC went block party. He isn't proc rock, so he won't be getting that healing off. And next shrine is coming off in 30 seconds, which means that the... Oh, that's a good slide. That's a good stun. That's a good follow-up. That's a lot of damage coming out. Eurosky, Eurosky does get the heal off and actually won't quite get out as the light as they're just taken down barely before they can escape. I was about to say, oh, red team have a spawn advantage. And I give a spawn advantage because the tank's up first before the underwent. However, that bright wing now being another whole 40 seconds out is going to be such a problem because that is 40 seconds of, well, I guess 30 seconds by the time the blue team gets there, of objective that Anarchy won't really be able to contest because having your healer is such an important kind of thing for this. So let's see how much of the um, objective Roll 1 Esports can get done in 28 seconds. Good start, 6. I'm going to move this mouse. 6, good start. Mm -hmm. I've also got to talk about, actually, talents over here. We have ETC going Bolt of the Storm, which will be an interesting combo of Bolt of the Storm into Mosh. It'll be nice to... will be fun. 
Chastise. Censure from Anduin, meaning there's now a stun on that piercing light. Tasful, Tasfin wall upgrade. Okay, fortified bunker, all right. And flamethrower from Kalefus. Ejector came up, I'm not sure when Brightwing came up, but yeah. Rocket W tries to use that stage dive to kind of, not stage dive, crowd surf to kind of get that easy quick kill. I say easy, potential quick kill, but nothing on. And we can see now just for, for just for the start of Roll 1 Esports is just pampering that shit down from a while away. And they'll be top four taken. Will they collapse on mid? Nope. They just decided to back out and just do it safely. We are in now one fight territory with that top four being down. That's a good stun from Punisher. You're a sky just taking a little bit of damage. And that'll be this front gate going down. I'm going to mention this. is also my second game of Buddy. This map today. I think I understand why people are like, oh, I don't want to keep casting this map. I've only cast, this is the second I've cast it in two games. I'm like, I understand completely why people are like, God, I'm really, really casting this map again. I want, I want people to play more of the maps. I, I want, I like good map variety. It's why I play this game over other, um, MOBAs, that's the word I'm looking for. What the hell, man? <laughs> what? What is it? Never mind. <laughs> gosh. I, I'm like, oh, I have prophetic filter on him. Thank gosh, I do. We see a to be taken out. We see people rotating up. We see aggressive pings in mid, a warning. And we're getting a lot of posturing again as 20s so are through both sides. And to cover um, the Storm Talents of Anarchy, because I haven't quite done that yet, we have... I don't know what this one's called. Radiating Faith from the Joanna Extra Oomph. From the Junkrat. Okay, I don't remember that. Hunter Spawner Boss from Greymane. No one can stop Death from Malphael. And the Invisible Friends from Brightwing. Tassadar drops a wall just to make sure they're not invaded on. But they are safe for now. You see now the blue team is rotating down to start peppering this boy over here. You see now Mongoose is pushing in, starting to do it. Nope, oh, don't do your mouse here. Starting to take it down. We see the blue team just in general taking out a lot. ETC is their early warning system as it slows down Hunter last, but however, that does mean Rock Your W is a bit out of position. Tesla will manage to split the teams as we see a lot of damage coming out. That is Brightwing and. Malfell Mosh Tire found two, I believe. Oh no, it found three, so he does actually have it back. Grey Man, I heard he used go for a throat there as well, wasn't able to find anything. Grizzly does use a rip tire only to peel Mongoose off himself, and that is actually two kills being for Brightwing and the um, Malfell so far. Second Jack will be the third, and I'm wondering if the blue team will decide to go mid with those siege camps, because Grizzly needs to book it if he's gonna live. Nope, he gets taken out by that either way. We see Iron Skin coming out from Joe. Light one cut. Oh! That task wall nearly screwed them. Does Rock have slide up? There it is. There's a kill. They're, gonna, they're really just going to do every... If you're just really going to do every building and just end. Yeah. Next person's 20 seconds off. And sure, in saying that, the blue team doesn't have the best way to kill buildings, per se. But with a siege camp, and with Malfoy, we're only just returning now, remembering he can do that. Uh, that will be... There'll be game going over the side of roll one esports. Nice. Oh my god, stretch again at the end of the game. Because apparently that's what I'm doing now. I'm just in a stretchy mood. Right? Let me put it over to my summary screen. As we can see. Relatively even damage numbers, relatively even healing numbers, but it's just that extra siege that came out that in the end just did so much because the red team. This is very similar kill line to the last game as well. As Roll 1 Esports was actually able to just kind of bully out the side of Anarchy just that bit more. And you can see that it does reflect in kind of how the map went, as a lot of the blue team structures were still up by the end, including gates. So while I say, like, yeah, it, was, it looked very much like Roll 1 Esports have a run of a... 
had a good run throughout it and actually did definitely deserve that win. They did very well. Uh, Anarchy does still have did still have some very good moments in there. It's things that I'm going to take away and just make little notes about before uh, Greg has to face Anarchy. So that'll be fun to watch later. However, for now, I'm going to throw it over to the map view screen just to summarize that this was indeed a 2-0 by the side of Roll1 Esports. Both teams played very well. It was a fun cast to cast. And I hope to see I hope to cast and see both these teams in the future. I will definitely see Anarchy in the future, but I definitely want to see more of Roll1 Esports in the future because they gave us a run, a good run. What I'll be doing for now is I'm actually going to do something I haven't done in a while and do a third cast in a row. It'll be exciting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself on mute. I am going to put on some music while I find a third game, and I'll be back with you as soon as I have something. So I'll see you all in a little bit.